We're apparently getting 10 minutes on map. That also gives me 10 minutes to uh, explain what's going on. So, hi guys, Wee Woo here. Uh, we are back with OFCRA uh, now that the entire world has gone back in time an hour with daylight savings. Uh, there were a few dates that I couldn't cover because of uh, time conflicts with, uh, ooh, excuse me, TSB's uh, next operation. So, uh, some of you might recognize this if uh, you were here on uh, Liru's channel a few uh, weeks ago. This is the same exact operation we had earlier that got cancelled because of desync issues. Uh, they did do some updates to the server similar to what FNF has done. So you'll see, you know, the speed doesn't uh, meet the network standard. Uh, we had a funny little clip of uh, the server kicking off like 30 people on FNF uh, from last Friday's mission that... Uh, uh, a lot of people seem to like. But anyway, uh, we're back on this OFCRA mission. It is Greeks versus Turks, with uh, Greeks being Blue 4 and the Turks being on Op 4. So, uh, it's going to be a very simple operation here with how the event is going to go. Uh, there are three different ways points can be scored today uh, for this OFCRA operation. The first is General Supremacy. So if either side gets knocked down to five uh, or fewer members in this, I think it's about a 60 person operation, so 30 be 30, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, so let's give them a warm welcome uh, then the opposing team gets two points. So if Turk forces op four gets knocked down to five or less guys, blue four gets two points. Uh, and if blue four gets knocked down to five or less guys, op four gets five, uh, two points. Uh, there is another uh, way to score points in this one, and that is regarding the officer. Uh, so it is an Op 4 officer that spawns down here, and he has to somehow get two friendly forces with Blue 4 forces deploying between him and those Turkish forces. If he is kept alive uh, for this operation, uh, the Turks, I believe, get three points. It's either two or three points. Uh, and if he is killed by Blue 4, then he gets the points as well. Uh, then there is a uh, neutral objective. Uh, well, then Blue 4 gets the points, excuse me. But then the uh, neutral objective, I believe, uh, is for control of this base right here. Uh, whoever controls it by the end of the session also gets uh, two points. So we have a few uh, other things here. I believe the officer needs to uh, end at the communication center by the end of this operation. Otherwise, the Turkish don't get the points for the officer, so they can't just stash him in uh, a corner of the map till the op ends. And we also have some tech slots marked. This is for um, debug slots. So Op4 uh, has debug units that spawn up there if it's needed. And Blue4 also has debug units that'll spawn over here if they're needed. So uh, Blue4, uh, as we saw last time, they're para-dropping in the center of uh, this island area. And then Op4, they spawned up at that base. Uh, there are multiple ground assets on both sides. Op4 had a tank, for example, and various vehicles, while Blue4 were mainly on foot. But they do have a submarine uh, four-man SDV team to uh, slide into somewhere. So last time uh, in the operation, what we saw is the officer had a bicycle. He went underwater with it to get himself a lot of extra distance from the mainland, and then there was an Op4 boat coming around to pick him up. So, probably see the same plan uh, again, because that seemed like a pretty good strategy. Better than the Op4 guy trying to evade all those Blue 4 units. Um, maybe they redid it, because, you know, most sides would probably be able to predict what the uh, other is doing if they were to watch back that stream or uh, watch back other people's streams. Uh, I would set up a multi for it, but I don't know. I don't know who's doing what, because no one... Uh, no one messages me things here, so I'm just uh, muted. chilling in the TeamSpeak right now. I'm not going to go into the uh, TFAR channel for this one because I don't want to overhear people's traffic because uh, how Spectator works in Armor 3 is when you die, you're all put to the same audio channel. And uh, the last thing we want to hear while we're commentating is someone to scream, damn it, really loud after they get sniped or something. Uh, that would be pretty damn funny, but I'm also deactivating my sounds here. And hopefully, the desync won't cause uh, any issues tonight. Now, the actual desync issue they had with this mission file was apparently 2.0. And when I say 2.0 here, I mean Arma 3 uh, with their 2.0 update. It added something where objects in the air uh, were causing some really nasty bits of lag. So as I predicted, it was the uh, those planes that were causing it because of an update. So 
uh, they have fixed that issue. And I'd love to see it uh, work here because after I see that it's working, I do want to make a, you know, a TSB themed uh, uh, from those flying planes that Blue 4 is going to jump out of. But anyway, uh, as we wait for those 10 minutes to pass, uh, a few things on the docket today. First off, there will be a TSB operation in a little under two hours. It is going to be a play off of the TMTM virtual reality map made by Skytech USA. I've been calling them Skytech online like an idiot, uh, which it was uh, Kaspersky antivirus. But instead, it's going to be themed around restarting the server for uh, TSB to uh, also announce our new um, IFA update. So that'll only take about an hour. I'm trying to make the Thursday ops be a little bit quicker because I don't want to keep cutting into granite 7.30 slot. So the ops are only going to be like, you know, an hour to 75 minutes. Uh, so next week, for example, have that, uh, ger uh, not German, excuse me, uh, US uh, defense against the Japanese. Uh, and then I'll keep the op centered around, you know, just like an hour lawn worth of combat, hour to hour and 15 minutes max. Uh, just short but sweet things uh, to try to squeeze it in the time slot. And then once I finish school, I'll uh, forego the Thursday slot, switch it back to a Wednesday slot, and then I'll have my time back again. So, you know, just trying to fit everything in the schedule here. But uh, that'll be an interesting, you know, virtual reality, twisted, uh, Inception-style operation that I don't think will take any more than an hour. It's meant to be a quick one. But from there, we have a new campaign starting with Paw Patrol at 8 o'clock. Uh, that is going to, again, be a quicker operation. It's going to be an airfield sabotage. Uh, they're going to insert on Sarani with some boats, take out the northern airfield and any assets they find on it and then extract to a fishing boat. And uh, that's going to be a campaign in on itself. So if they leave any of the aircraft there on the airfield uh, or any of the vehicles there, uh, I'm going to be able to use those later in the campaign against them. Uh, so it's, again, like, you know, hiring PMCs to do sabotage stuff, which normally you do special forces for, but I was uh, limited in the map choice, so I just uh, came up with something instead. And then we have the TMTM operations night, which I don't know anything about. Uh, we just uh, hop on and we see what's going on. But I've learned uh, I don't take leadership at night because I'm too tired. And I don't take anything complex at night uh, because, again, I'm too tired. And it just stresses me out and pisses me off too easily. Uh, whether or not we'll see a tiki bar with anime girls again, I don't know. But we'll see how things go. <laughs> And, of course, Kandor coming in with the hashtag free Kandor. This is going to be five minutes behind him saying that, but he is almost unbanned. I will not have a 700th op this Saturday. This Saturday is going to be another off day because Bloodway and I are apartment shopping. And uh, we will be back with the 700th op next week. Uh, again, their deadline for submitting missions is like Wednesday midday. And uh, this week I've been too busy, A, focusing on last night's uh, 506 op, which... By the way, we have to start making a new campaign for the 506. I'm not going to bring any special mods except maybe a, a new map. Uh, but the zombie campaign concluded, and we have already released a video. And I also, I think 15 minutes ago, or it might have been 8 minutes ago, released uh, a public app uh, from last Friday. So, that should be good enough. But uh, I don't know what I'm doing with the 506 yet. Uh, I think we're going to keep it modern, uh, milsim. Uh, maybe something a little longer than that little four-shot uh, winter campaign we did. Uh, or was it three? It was three or four missions. Uh, so something a little longer than that, but, you know, again, something dynamic with the world. Uh, and then I'll see what they have in their maps, and if I don't want to do anything with those, I'll uh, work something else. But uh, that was put through, and, and what else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, so the, the mission development for that underground bunker complex, that took me all of Wednesday and a little bit of Tuesday, and then over the weekend I was working on a different one for that mission, but I decided to scrap it because I didn't like how it looked. Uh, so instead I you know remade it and I streamed some of the process there. Uh, but then the rest of my Wednesday and this morning went to developing the... Um, TSB up for today, which I hope people enjoy. I, I accidentally stepped on some toes when I announced it. Uh, I wasn't trying to like be spiteful, but some people uh, took it as a misconception. So I, I accidentally pissed off a few this morning because uh, it was like, you know, I was shit talking the IFA mod. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just 
I was just trying to make a parody thing about the update. But, you know, stay la vie. I'm an idiot. I'll eventually learn how to be a, a social being here, but... Alright, so, uh, as you saw in the side chat, they were developing uh, the... Uh, they had 10 minutes in map screen, and I was uh, talking about the op, and now, uh, you know, we're in the mission. They've got a 10-minute warm-up here, and we're going to be able to review their assets. So first off, right off the bat, I see that the floating shelf survived the uh, the audit of the mission. That's great. Everyone loves a good old-fashioned floating shelf. Uh, I just, I find that really funny. But what I'm also happy about is they gave me a dedicated spectator slot, uh, so I can actually, uh, you know, track tracers um, instead of having to die on a side and then get it. So that is all uh, always great. Uh, but let's see, I'm not seeing night vision on either side. It looks like they're going to be stuck to this type of viewership, so that means illumination is going to be very important. But I also know it's going to get uh, earlier in the... Um, or I guess later in the evening, and hopefully it'll brighten up a little bit, because uh, this type of environment is going to be hard. So we have what looks like a T-72 on Op 4. It's the same exact assets as uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, they've also got two uh, M113s with the uh, Open 50 Cal. Uh, we've got a... I think this is a five-man Hilux, uh, so two in here, and then the additional three can fit back there. It might be able to fit more, but I think it's a five-man and then to transport Euros. And again, this is the Turkish side. Uh, they also have two M240 bunkers that they can deploy uh, over kill zones. I remember when we talked about this mission earlier, um, when it you know was desyncing like hell, which by the now. way, it's not anymore. They're not rubber banding. They fixed the issue great. Uh, we did mention how with, when Blue 4 has to come up and capture this spot, or if the uh, independent guy is able to sneak around, uh, you know, the kill zones that are going to be set up in this zone are going to be absolutely devastating for Blue 4 to kind of push through. Also, you're dead, man. Thanks for the nine-month resub. What are we calling the kid? It's been nine months. <laughs> but I hope you keep enjoying the ops, man. Again, we're on a five-minute delay, so uh, sorry if this is a bit late towards you, but hope you keep enjoying the ops, and I hope you get a kick out of this one. Now, something else I kind of like, I like the furniture that's been developed in here. Normally in Arma 3, you don't want to develop furniture because it's just extra details for an op, which uh, cost frames. But uh, with this size of an operation, let me quickly tab out and check. We're at about a, a 60 to 70 person operation. There's 64 people in the server, uh, counting me 65, because uh, I'm basing this off of the TFAR channel. There's still like another, let's see, E, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's still like 10 more people trying to get on. So this will be like a 70 per, um, person operation. So let me type that in the title. 70 plus. And I didn't mean to hit caps lock right there. Hold on. There we go. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, I don't mind answering them. It'll just take me a few minutes to, uh, you know, get to the question to answer it. But yeah, no, we're on a five minute delay because uh, OFCRA has asked me to put that five minute delay on. Uh, this is the only stream I do right now that has a five minute delay. Uh, so everything's a little delayed, but I swear I'll get to you all and uh, everything. But I saw Steel was down, he woke back up though. And uh, you know, the night vision is a little tough here because we have the light right there and I'm also starting to see the night vision come out. So uh, it looks like they all, uh, all do have night vision. It was just built into their inventory. So this will be a mainly nighttime operation now. Oh no. No, 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 not the map glitch. There we go. Sometimes the map can get a little sticky. Now, once again, we have uh, the golf team, which is the uh, four-man SDV team. They also have P90s, which, or at least uh, one of them had a P90. There we go. He's, the, I think, the medic. Uh, let's see. Bluck is, no, he's just a regular dude in there. But uh, they've also got, like, a marksman team um, and then, you know, a bunch of specialist weapons. But, yeah, no. So uh, three of them have P90s that are suppressed, and one of them has, like, a full-on marksman rifle with a uh, flash hider so these guys can deploy on the rear of those uh, op 4 machine gun bunker positions and uh, take them out from a flank thus alleviating the pressure from the main blue 4 force and i cannot wait to see how they are brought on and then you have the rest of blue 4 all the way over yonder just have to find Send them in goat hold up six now they're actually oh, shizzle, it had been already this long. Well, always glad to support the LCP. Ah. Hope the player base has fun today. 
So this is how they fixed it. Those air assets that were causing the desync, they've actually gotten rid of them. And instead, they have opted to give Blue 4 boats. So two SOCOM boats now, instead of them jumping out of uh, those planes. So that probably means I'm not going to uh, use those planes any TSB ops soon because of the desync issues that they were causing. But we've also noticed both sides, they do have uh, ammunition uh, to pull things from, some special weapons, etc. Uh, Blue 4, uh, for their AT main weapon, like their MAT team, quote unquote, they got a Carl Gustav to take care of the tanks. Uh, we also are seeing some G3 rifles with uh, even some ACOGs on them. Wow. So this will be a bit of a longer range fight. Also, that laser is coming out of the magazine? Hold on. See, this is Shadow here. He's running around with it. I think the laser is... Like, I see the laser module on his gun. But the laser is misaligned. That's kind of funny. But yeah, no. So uh, these guys are being given 7.62 based weaponry from the looks of it. G3 uh, German rifles. Uh, as are Greek force. And then the Op 4 Turkish force. Look like it's, uh, I'm seeing some standard st uh, stag mags here. Or stenags. I always call them stag mags. That's, that's a misconception on my end. But they're rocking basic 5.56. Five, I'm also not seeing uh, that many long range scopes on them. So here's actually one right here. But we're seeing just kind of a, a difference in, you know. Some factions have slightly better gear here. Well, you know, Op4 has the frickin' tank. So we'll see how things go. But this will be a pretty even about 35, 40 v 40. We already have Corvo dead, but it looks like he relogged because he is A-OK. -okay. But uh, with this being here, Blue 4 has a little bit more of an option on where they want to deploy. So Op 4 is going to have to be a little more careful on where they set up their defensive lines. But that gives this officer more time to move around. Uh, unfortunately, I think the officer was screwing around with his water escape vehicle and might have just... Uh, accidentally knocked it in the water <laughs> and now it's infinitely gonna go in that direction so let's see it's uh Burnus here he is the objective man he's probably gonna have to take the bike instead but if he just takes the bike and hugs the right side of the ao he should be okay uh the water vic would have been a little bit better i don't think op4 knows where blue force spawns though so knowing that bit of meta, if, uh, you know, he just took the water vic and came around because that's just an SVD team, he could make it. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens in that adjustment. I'm also going to check right here, see if Op4 has their boat again. I don't see Op4 with the boat. So this is kind of landlocked uh, their officer unless he wants to swim for that moped. Or not moped, excuse me, the water scooter. Similar vehicle, but one's the amphibia. One is aquatic and one is uh, ground based. Two minutes left, but yeah, no, there's not. Oh, no, here's the RHIV. All right. So there can still be a water based interception if Op 4 wants to try to go for that. So I'm hoping this op only lasts about an hour so we can, um, you know, get into the TSB operation early and on time, but there isn't that much prep I have to do for it. It's just uh, writing and everything. Just having a sip of water here. But based off of the fact that um, Benerus here is uh, staying by the bicycle, I think he's going to try to take that to uh, go through and get to friendly forces before he's picked off. Also, Hellbound, thanks for the host, man. Appreciate it. And I hope you get a kick out of this PvP thing. Custom faction mods? Uh, no. It's um, The kits are built off of RHS and BW mod. Uh, so the G3s that uh, Blue 4 is using are from BW, and then most of the gear you're seeing here is actually uh, RHS itself. Again, you can you can get very creative with, um, you know, building your own kits and stuff, and I just heard someone smack someone. They have a mod in... Um, OFCRA, uh, it's a knock people six. unconscious mod, now. and you can literally run Hashtag up and knock someone thunder. unconscious for five seconds, and it's... 
I haven't seen it since the 501st had it as a quote-unquote secret mod, but these guys actually use it as a PvP concept, which I find is really funny. It just has a cooldown with it, though, and that audible smack will make everyone else turn around to deal with it. <laughs> but Candor, yes, hashtag free Candor. You're unbanned soon, man. It's gonna be great. Thanks for the four-month resub. Hope you keep enjoying the operations, and I hope you get a kick out of this one. And the mission has officially started, and we're getting some desync spikes. That's not good. Um, actually, that wasn't decent. That was just some lag spikes here. End of mission. Six hours and 30 minutes. Well, we're not going to stay on for the full six hours and 30 minutes here. <laughs> I think that's a glitch. But I, I don't believe it's supposed to take that long. <laughs> Otherwise, op for uh, Benaris here. We're just going to call him Benis for the rest of the op. Uh, he is the lone officer biking into... Um... He's doing something all right. They also gave him the spine shirt. Oh, that's funny. Uh, ben is here is trying to discover the real nature of Arma physics. I just, I keep remembering, like I, I keep looking to chat to see your guys' reaction, but I'm like, oh yeah, we're on the five minute delay. So I'm sure you'll get to that spot in a second. Otherwise, Blue Four have fully mounted these two uh, so convicts and are driving them in now. Some people on the rear guns for security, but with the fog, this thick it's hard to see but they're not going to be able to get more than about 75 to 100 meters of visibility so it looks like they're going to go immediately for a southern approach trying to find Venice here he's put his light on at least i think that's his light no it's just uh okay no he turned it off i think he's trying to drive it into Jeez, that's some pretty uh, tough traction there, but it looks like he has found a place to uh, put his bike. Oh, no, he broke the front wheel. So is he actually going to hide in this town? Because Blue Four is coming towards him. He's also shooting out the lights, but it's going to be a classic game of Blue Four hide and seek then. Op Four is going to come down with an RHIV with um, two dudes, so they're going to try to pick him up. And Op4, I guess, is going to set up a defensive line here. Meanwhile, the SDV has been mounted by Blue4, and it is underway, but it's still going to be another, like, five minutes before it makes it to shore. So this should be interesting. I'm not sure if Benis here is going to expect any uh, Blue4 guys to rush his position, but I think a SOCOM boat's literally going to pull right up to him, and I'm not sure if he's going to expect that or not, so... He is now going to run along the coast here. If we were to look out, how far has his uh, water scooter gone? It's definitely out here now. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea where it's gone. But I believe you even see him as the VIP section there. Uh, he is going to... And he's put his flashlight on. He's going to the southern tip. This is going to be really bad if the SOCOM boat manages to see him on shore and goes for an intercept. Because I believe it is a kill. Um, Blue 4 is going for a kill here, not a capture. To get the points. Blue 4, I think, is just trying to come around, which means they could also intercept that RHIB with their guns, but... This is actually kind of funny. Uh, the boat's going to pass within about 200 meters of Venice here. But I don't think that's going to be enough. Uh, we're going to see a little bit of it through the fog. So the question is, does anyone down on that boat spot Venice? And we had people pointing right at the shore. I don't think they spotted him. But yeah, no, he's going for the uh, he's going for the water now. But now the real question is going to be: Is the boat going to spot the RHIB coming in? And if it does and engages the boat, how is Venice going to get to the evac point for himself? Very interesting. TSB will be getting there up in uh, about. An hour, no, three to four, four to five, a little under an hour and a half. 
They're a little over, actually. We'll get there when we get there. Otherwise, Blue 4 have done a bit of a far dismount here. Uh, usually when you see this type of dismount, it means that uh, Blue 4 want to use the boat later on. I think they're actually reassigning people to get on the rear guns. They're keeping someone in the driver's seat. So I think they fully intend to keep using this boat. We see some dead bodies coming out. Uh, that was most likely people that got kicked off because of the quote-unquote network uh, requirement of the server. So that's unfortunate. But, I mean, there's, there's an example of it right there. And again, that's to help the server uh, not desync out. But... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not sure if that GMG is um, rescripted or not, but that would be a very nice uh, asset to have to help Blue 4 push up on this flank. Meanwhile, looking back at the boats, Blue 4 has decided to hug the coast here, so that SOCOM boat's going to miss that RHIB. The RHIB, uh, based off of where the Op 4 guy is swimming, they have a rendezvous point down here. And they're going to pick them up and possibly just, you know, swing around to a different section. Meanwhile, the SDV, I said a few minutes ago it was five minutes away. I've underestimated how slow that thing is. It's probably another two to three Sounds minutes to work. get on the shore there. But now it's just a matter of where is this fit going to dismount? I think it's going to dismount on the other side to set up a nice battle line here. And also so they can get their boats on either side to kind of help them assist in uh, taking that position. Yep, so leaving one guy on the gun, he's taking the GMG, and the boat itself is going back. Uh, it might pull back to pick up some of these additional guys as well, uh, who late joined, late spawned. But with that, uh, we clearly see one of the uh, subgroups in the community. They are heading out on their own uh, to, I guess, hit central. And then this boat is probably going to dismount forces here as well. I take it that chat has just picked up on uh, what Bennis was doing with the broken wheel on the bicycle. I think he was just messing around, uh, waiting, so uh, he'll be in line. You know what? I think they timed it. I think Op4 genuinely timed a rendezvous point right here. Uh, so Bennis knew how long it would take for him to get there from swimming, and how long the RHIB would take to get there based on the RHIB's route. So they could, you know, not have him waiting in the ocean and not have the boat waiting for him. So I think he was just messing around with some of the assets he had. That's why he drove the, um, the Vic out, which up here it is. I thought that was a lot farther. I mean, it's going slowly, but okay. <laughs> well, I thought that went out super damn far. And then, yeah, um, his bike, he also moved in this building, I guess, just to throw off any blue four guys that were going to try to hunt him down. But based off of how the boat is going along this vector, and he is about, you know, 100 meters out, I definitely think they pre-planned that route uh, so they could ensure best efficiency for that. Now, we're looking over here. Uh, it looks like a few guys potentially drowned or got wounded as they came to shore. I think that's because... Uh, they might have, as they were jumping out, the boat might have moved and armored a few of them. Uh, this isn't really good. They need to get these guys out of the water, because otherwise they'll drown quicker than they, uh, you know, will get medicked back. So we might see a few extra Blue 4 KIAs here. And that's not what we want to see early on, because Blue 4 is already at a bit of a disadvantage, since they have to go contend with that tank. But otherwise, it looks like the officer has been picked up by the... Op 4 RHIB and is gonna RTB. And it looks like both SOCOM boats are kind of waiting uh, nearby Blue 4 here to try and, uh, I guess, deliver support fire. But we have another guy. He was um, unconscious. Now he is dead because he has pretty much drowned. But based on the, how would I say this? Uh, the viscousness of the patch of red right here, because this is a blood stain. Um, since it's like circular almost uh because this is just a bunch of textures and then the middle is actually incredibly more dark uh he must have gotten hit like at least 10 or 15 times to make a single i think his leg uh bleed out that much Whew. So 
Otherwise, SOCOM Boat is almost uh, going to make it. Taking a quick drink right here. But I think that SOCOM Boat's goal is to either assault the op for airbase early or to get some recon data for the main group. But I mean, this base is pretty well defendable. Uh, they've got a light coming in. They've got, you know, bunkers, everything that they could need. Also, looking at op for spawn, it looks like they did also take one of the machine gun bunkers. They also moved around the other one because they were facing south. This one's now facing west. So that is quite interesting to see there. And Op4 is trying to set up defensive lines on this northern hill overwatching this airfield. That's really smart because look at this massive kill zone that they're going to be able to watch any Blue 4 guys coming in on. The only weakness of it is if Blue 4 gets in the low ground and moves slowly through this area down here, uh, they could easily get around that kill zone that Op4 is trying to make, take the objective right here, and then launch a stage offensive from down here. But this ridgeline that we're also seeing Op4 kind of set up on, we also have Zulu unconscious over here. Don't know if he was run over or was just bleeding out and um, it's lost too much blood because with when it's nighttime and you have NVGs, it's really hard to see the pulsing pain effect uh, to show that you have taken damage. But no, it looks like he woke back up now, so weird. But Op4, if they just set up a nice U right here, uh, not even covering that area, if they just set up a, a backwards L, they could easily just hold the entire position from up here. So, you know, a machine gun bunker looking over here, they grab the other machine gun bunker look here, uh, they could easily prevent Blue Force advances into the area here. But we have Op4 popping some lighting over here. I think these are just chem lights from the looks of it. Yep. And we also have Blue... Uh, that was Op4. Excuse me. Op4 is doing that. Uh, Blue4, meanwhile, have dismounted the SDV, and they are now scuba in. Uh, so I think because Blue4 is just holding right here, they're waiting on that scuba team. To come into the AO itself and go from there. We also have one of the SOCOM boats that have pulled around to the submarine itself. He's on his own. He doesn't have a gunner with him. That's interesting enough. And I think Blue 4, uh, because they have the full hour and a half, they have time to let this SOCOM team come in. They'll probably find a high point and try to find Op Force positions. So then Blue 4 knows where to go. But Blue 4 can also easily go reposition themselves if needed um, with their boats and completely circumvent Op 4's defensive lines. What we're also seeing is some uh, vehicles that were right here. It looks like Blue 4 is taking hold of them and is going to help, uh, excuse me, use civilian VIX to helping their advanced on op force positions now what i'm gonna do real quick is i'm gonna look at some of these other positions to try to see if there's any other vehicles around we do have a car and a motorcycle right here two motorcycles actually so blue four can uh commandeer those vehicles and use them in uh to push up on up defensive lines here. We still have Flanker over here on that SOCOM boat. I mean, with the fog kind of lifted up, if he was looking around, he could potentially spot that boat. You could at least see something because we're in the same position. Hold up, he just got in the boat. I don't think he's going to see it because he's locked in the first person, even with the vehicles. And that's now going to be like incredibly difficult to spot from his angle. He's looking off to the left. I could see him soloing, uh, pulling in front of that boat because he has the quicker boat here. Uh, dismounting, getting on the freaking M134 and shredding that boat apart. But I think the RHIB is just narrowly going to be able to evade his uh, uh, glance here. And again, that boat also um, evaded the SOCOM boat as it was hugging the shoreline. So... Some potential for the uh, rounds to end pretty early here, or at least Op4 to gain a significant point advantage and to force Op4 to then defend the secondary objective here. Uh, but instead, 
Try not to a draw. trying to think we have uh by the way nasa is the guy that invited me to start shoutcasting this stuff he's part of the uh i'm gonna call them the or delta team because they're you know special forces uh we've got two of them coming down the coast and we have two others and one of them is the marksman here uh coming up on the side right here so i like this nice little division here let's them cover more ground get more eyes around also you might notice some of these names from friday night fights because uh, these guys are all in the same PvP circle. Now, interesting enough, these two guys are going to see the RHIB come in. And I wonder if they might try to make a move on it. I think the RHIB is going to pull into this harbor. It's going to be a bit safe on that. I think Op4 is also waiting with that car to uh, pull them in. Oh, we also have a triple one seven. Excuse me, a uh, one one three. Wrong vehicle. One one three coming down. I'm not sure if it's uh, just on a random patrol or if they're gonna pick up the officer with that. But based off of how it's uh, coming along this route, I think it's just doing a circular patrol right here, which is smart. Uh, they're just um, trying to prevent any blue four advances from coming. But as I say that, it's turned around and is now watching the coast. So we're on a five minute delay. But I think Op4 might be predicting, uh, because they know where the uh, Special Forces VIX starts, uh, spawns, excuse me, uh, they might be predicting that uh, Blue 4 will send a group up here. So they've sent a um, 113 to try to overwatch this beach route. Oh, wow. So. Delta might get caught out of position here. Because they're going to run right in front of this gunner. And the gunner turns to the left as at the fucking moment he needed to be watching that vector. Oh. Oh my. That. He might have just seen them on that angle though. Now he's firing. Yep. But that was some crazy dumb luck that Hippie decided to look the other way at that moment. But now they know that the Delta team is here. We're seeing uh, Steel here engaging uh, Sh uh, Shero. Uh, he's getting shot at though. And he gets ta uh, not taken out, but he gets knocked out. Uh, so he's knocked unconscious, but not dead. And we got the 113 coming around. But now it's going to be up to Blue 4 to kind of advance up here. And get into position. Looks like we also have some Blue 4 guys on the tech slots. Uh, so that's, you know, respawns in case, um, you know, it's needed for technical issues. But let's see. It looks like Hippie uh, and his gunner here, Nubas, someone was able to take out one of the Blue 4 guys. It wasn't... Um, I'm not sure who it was actually because we do have a Vic down it wasn't steel either but there were four guys and now there are only three the Goblin's crawling around down here looking into his group yeah Bluck is dead uh, so he got engaged by someone it was Ram that got him with the machine gun all right now I wonder if Shero is going to flank that 113 also, we have Op4 firing out at their own VIP boat. And the VIP boat's also getting close to the SOCOM boat, but I doubt the SOCOM boat's going to react to it. So Shero, if he's smart, he's gonna come around behind this Vic and get an easy headshot on Hippie, but the backplate's gonna help cover Hippie's head. So NASA right now, he's hiding. He's throwing, um, I think, smokes or frags around. No, that was, um... Yeah, that was a flashbang. Send and go team six. But Shero's going to yeah. be able to get a really good angle on the gunner here, which I believe is Hippie. No, it's uh, it's Nubass here. I'm sorry, because you see the little gunner symbol there. Oh, this is this is perfect. If Shero were to come out and uh, Hippie were to stop the Vic for a second. Oh, 
This is what Sharo needs. Also, Reapers and Sandy giving a random sub out. There is the knockout. Oh, wow. No way. Hippie decided to turn out to look with Sharpo and, um, with Nubas. Excuse me. Hippie wakes back up, though, quickly turns in. But, yeah, Nubas is KIA. Hippie, he's going to be safe in there as long as he doesn't turn out. But he picked the wrong time to turn out, and uh, Sharo was able to get the kill. Sharo does have AT as well, so if he were to walk up there and put a charge on it, He'd be a-okay and uh, taking that Vic out. Romeo trying to get a hit on Charo, but I mean, from the waterway, he could easily put the charge on the back here and be fine. Looks like the RHIB has pulled around far. They're gonna hold him in the water for now because that's where they believe he's the safest, the VIP, I mean. And that's, that's not a bad call. They just have to bring him in to be there at the end. So, you know, in the last 10 minutes of the op, then he needs to pull around. So Charo's gonna put a fucking explosive charge from the waterway. Hippie, I guess, sensing something's up. Charo quickly trying to rig a satchel. It's gonna have a reduced effect because it's in the water, and he decides against it. He should have been able to plant it on the Vic itself, though. Hippie now doing a backup. Uh, he might be in coordination with Romeo there, and Romeo might have had an angle to see that uh, Sharo was right there, so Hippie just quickly jolted back to try to run him over. I'm not sure if that's legal or not to do in this uh, in OFCRA, though. Oh, yeah, no, Hippie is definitely driving around defensive. No! Sharo did get the charge down and just took out the 113, causing the 113 to go into the ground. Hippie now pulling back, somehow surviving. Because Ace is very liberal with your ability to survive explosive charges. And now Hippie's running up the coast. Sharo might be caught out of position here, though. Looks like, nope, Goatland's also pulled around over there. Uh, NASA was spotted in the tall grass. That was a great play by uh, Sharo there. I thought he picked the charge back up, but instead I think he armed it. And our, uh, the camera angle just glitched out on it temporarily. So that was pretty great. But Reapers, again, thanks for giving out a random gift stuff, Christian. I hope you, ho uh, you thank Reapers. I hope you'll keep enjoying the ops. Hope you get a kick out of this one. Hold up. Hippie is going to catch Sharo uh, out of position here. Quickly goes in the bipod and gets a head uh, It wasn't a headshot, but it knocked Sharo uh, out. If he stays underwater for 45 seconds, he will drown. Actually, no, he won't because he's got um, a rebreather on and shit. So... Hippie, unless he goes up and throws grenades on Sharo, uh, he's not going to be able to kill him. Uh, we just saw a grenade get thrown, but it was nowhere as close as it needed to be. I think Hippie's going to run up, possibly grenade Sharo point blank and get it. But meanwhile, we have Falcon that's pushed up. He is now trying to engage NASA here. NASA expending all 50 of his rounds of the P90, switching to his handgun. Trying to push on Falcon. Falcon did a quick reload here. And NASA, unfortunately, turning away and gets headshotted by Falcon and I think also shot in the back by Steel and Biscuit. Goatland, meanwhile, he's been uh, pushing into this perimeter here, climbed over some razor wire and hurt himself, so he's bandaging up. Uh, looks like Hippie was able to uh, actually confirm the kill on Sharo here, and the Blue 4 Delta team is not really having a good time here. Definitely not being as effective as they wanted to. Sure, they knocked out a 1-1-3, but a really strong suppressed infantry team I don't think is a good trade for a single 1-1-3. Maybe the T-72, sure, but it's tough to say. Meanwhile, Steel is down. I think Goatland might have been able to get a shot on him. If Goatland was smart, he'd throw a frag up there, which I think is exactly what he's trying to line up right now. Gets a perfect frag in there. Might knock Biscuit out as well. No knockouts, but he definitely got some um, shrapnel wounds there. Actually, with the little uh, the angle of uh, the structure here, it actually looks like it uh, hid Biscuit's right leg and prevented Biscuit from taking a lot of damage there. But we do see a lot of blood on the ground here. Uh, this is just a texture glitch, but their blood will come to the ground level. And now you got Biscuit dragging Steel down to uh, prevent any more grenade throws. So it's just up to Goatland at this point. 
but so far it's been some pretty even trade. So all of that Delta team's down. And I mean, the only person that's really died is Nubass, and they lost a 1 1 3. So it's tough to say who has the upper advantage right now. I would say it's still Op4 because of their asset balance, but Goatland, I mean, he is the marksman. He does have a flash hider, and I've seen him in FNF. He's a pretty good player. So I think if we were to give him some opportunity here, uh, when I say we, I mean the enemy players, give him a chance to kind of come around and, uh, you know, knock out some of these guys from the rear, I think he could do an exceptionally good job. But look at Falcon spot right here. Oh, that is honestly the perfect spot. He can engage anyone that runs into this compound and no one has a chance to re-engage him uh, except if he knocks someone to their feet and they'll immediately, you know, PID where he is in turn. But that gives Falcon so much time to knock him out. And he has a 30 round magazine. By then, if their head gets lower, he can easily headshot them as a uh, blue four player would try to find him. But we'll see if Goatland uh, potentially falls for something like that. We also have Ram overwatching the actual gateway itself. And he's the one that's already gotten a kill today. So uh, if he gets in a fight with Goatland, Goatland is going to very easily silhouette out because he's in all black for these, uh, you know, green NVGs. Whereas Ram will be a little bit tougher to spot because, uh, you know, his camel, I would say, you know, this partially blends. And you can see the bulge right there in the little black spot. But I mean, that compared to, to that when it's brightly lit as this, you know, with our NVG, I think... Um, Ram will be able to have a little bit of a quicker reaction there. So if I was in Op4 shoes and I had a perfect information system, as in players were communicating with each other actively, and there were no lines of communication severed, Op4 would know that there is still a blue four presence here because of that grenade throw by Goatland and they would know that they didn't take anyone out. So I think we're actually having Op4 bringing an additional four-man team here. This appeared to be a far right security wing uh, overwatching the coast for any blue four Vicks that would come in. So they're gonna probably come down, link up with Hippie and sweep this area for any more blue four guys uh, because the Op4 guys here know that there is still a blue four presence. Meanwhile, it looks like Goatland was able to vault over the wall here and he might actually, not the wall, excuse me, the gate. Uh, looks like he is going to try to climb over the gate right here as well through the barbed wire. Ouch. No, he's standing on top of the... <laughs> he's using the barbed wire. I guess his shark suit is uh, also uh, rated to stop barbed wire cuts. He's trying to use the barbed wire to... Cl oh my god. He has now climbed into the base from the barbed wire, and now he can completely circumvent the entrance. Falcon's still in a good spot to, you know, see him coming around on the flank, but Goatland, now he can just set up right here, wait for him to go back in that tower and just snipe him. And, I mean, that's, what, like a 20 to 30 meter shot, and he's got freaking DMS scope and a flat... Yeah, he, he'll be able, uh, easily able to get a free headshot. Meanwhile, looking at the rest of the blue four force, they're still kind of being slow right here. Uh, looks like they have some guys uh, doing recon where they can. They also have a mortar. Interesting. So let's, uh, let's give him a warm welcome, maybe we? we have Nomad here. He's set up. So Goatland might get some mortar support in a second here. That's a good way to counter the defensive positions Op4 is making. So again, with this being like a 90 minute round, they have like double the time, a little under double the time that a normal FNF round would have of 50 minutes. Uh, so they can use that to their advantage. Also, Op4 has a mortar back here too. Uh, but it is not being used. Interesting. So Goatland's coming around. The issue with this spot, looks like he uh, used this to climb over the wall too. But Falcon is actually now in a really good position to catch Goatland coming out of this entrance. Uh, and uh, Goatland will be illuminated on the light. So, yeah, Goatland has now stolen the mortar, quickly checks it. 
Uh, don't know what type of ammunition that mortar has. Could only be illumination, could be HE as well. I'm willing to bet the blue form mortar has HE though. Uh, cause if I was him, I would have taken that mortar and just, you know, brought it all the way up and just dropped some HE. No, that's exactly... No, hold up. That... Wow. That was the blue form mortar. So really great job uh, on the part of Nomad for uh, properly identifying where on the map that Op4 team was. But the real exceptional of job is going to go to the Mortar Gunner, which is uh, Massacre here. I mean, staying true to his name, he actually managed to get a knockout here. And the Medic is trying to climb up to grab him. If they just repeat this fire, there it is. Literally, being within 10 meters, they don't have um, artillery computers, uh, so it's all range cards and shit. I mean, being that accurate is pretty damn good for no spotting rounds. That was their first salvo. Uh, and they've definitely stopped this Op4 group from coming in, which is going to buy Goatland more time to push along this vector. Meanwhile, Goatland going to go up to this building. He's going to actually be able to catch Falcon out of position now because Falcon adjusted himself and he's actually exposed himself a lot more now. More HE coming in. More knockouts being done. Now we have three dudes knocked out. Great use of the mortar there. Goatland, I think, is going to... Yep, gets a pistol shot on Ram. Staying with the suppressed gun. Steel now looking around, wondering what the heck happened. Uh, Goatland's not going to see Falcon from this angle, though. I think Goatland has his um, effects volume turned up because he hears Steel's footsteps coming around. And Falcon, oh man, if you were to pull back a little bit and look up, he might be able to catch Goatland uh, uh, in position right there. You see Steel going on his radio real quick to report that, you know, he heard suppressed shots. He's having Falcon, I think, come around. And now you got Biscuit coming out. Goatland switching back to his handgun. Hitting Biscuit. Biscuit quickly going down. And Falcon and Steel, they know that Goatland is right here now, uh, somewhere along that building. So they're circling here. They're going to have a little bit of a tough time getting through that vehicle. Meanwhile, looking back at the mortar results here, three dead from that HE mortar. Absolutely brilliant by Massacre and Nomad here. Uh, whittling down Op 4's forces tactically with their assets here. We have a grenade thrown. Uh, he's trying to bait Biscuit to come out of that tower. Oh, look at this. They also they also set up the wheels in a way that made a little firing hole right here. That's pretty cute. But I would say Blue 4 with these maneuvers has actually bought themselves a little bit of an advantage here. But it's also going to rely on how much damage does Goatland do and if he's able to take out this entire group. Uh, those mortars have prevented uh, Op 4's QRF from getting to this base to really hamper down on Goatland's chances. So... This, this is exactly the type of special forces stuff Blue 4 wants to do. They want to take Op 4's smaller groups and completely take them out. They also want to make sure that they can take control of this base by the time the mission ends. And the more of the small groups that they can catch out of um, Op 4, uh, the more players that Blue 4 will have to do the really hard assault, which is going to be the uphill battle of taking this position out. We also still have the Op 4 tank to worry about. Uh, and that T-72, I mean, it's got a guy turned out, and they are looking for an opportunity to use that tank. So meanwhile, it looks like Goatland, unfortunately, was just taken out. We missed it. Uh, I think he poked his head out and was taken out by one of these three guys down here. Uh, we also saw some smoke of a grenade thrown. Uh, it looks like Falcon was able to get that kill. It was either Falcon or Steel. But uh, I'd actually be willing to bet it was Steel because he's on the back of this truck. He was looking up. He would have had a great angle if Goatland poked his head out. But either way, with that, it's now up to Blue Force's main force to finish the objective. So, quick recap on where all of the assets are. Blue Force still has their two SOCOM boats. One has a gunner. 
or the GMG on the western side. The other SOCOM boat here uh, is just staying open. It doesn't have anyone on the back, so they might use that as a quick transport vic to move forces around. Uh, the entire special forces team for Blue 4 has been killed off. Op 4 has taken, I believe, uh, let's see, three, four, five, uh, five ca um, KIAs. We have Ram as the only guy dead in that group, but we also have these four guys. Uh, New Bass, part of the 113, and then the three guys we saw up there, which were actually part of Hippie's M113 infantry group. So they were the guys, you know, watching that eastern flank. So body-wise, it's still pretty even. I would uh, actually, we're seeing, let's see, uh, that skull doesn't count because he's in that boat. So, you know, four blue, four deaths to five op four deaths. Op four is down a 113, but it's still anyone's game. Also, blue fours use some of their HE shells. Where Where's Bennis here? He is hiding way. Oh, he's way up north. Yeah, trying to stay out of the fight because he only has to be at the communication center in the last few minutes of the round itself. And we're on the last hour here. I have to be in TSB in about 50 minutes. So, we have a little bit of a lull here as Blue 4 is slowly making... They're not even really advancing. They're just kind of holding this position. I think they're trying to develop a new plan. Hold up. That was Biscuit double-tapping Goatland's body to make sure he was dead. All right. I mean, that would be a really powerful weapon to pick up and use. I know they're allowed to pick up enemy guns. Uh, certainly a lot better than a holographic sight on that gun. At least take the scope, you know? But Op4 is still maintaining control of that base, and we're just going to wait on Blue4 now to move in. So, I'm going to have a quick drink here. All right. I mean, at this point now, it's wait and see. Op 4, if the mission were to end in five minutes, Op 4 would, uh, you know, bring the guy to the post. They'd also maintain control of the airbase. Uh, all they have to do is turtle here, and they're fine. So Blue 4 needs to start thinking about making an advance, and I think we're starting to see that. No, I thought these Vicks would be fully mounted. But that is not the case. But with those Vicks being utilized, I knew it. There's the tank firing. Oh, ho, ho. that was the one with two people in it. No, that was an HE round on an infantry guy on Border Keeper. I thought that was on one of the Vicks here. But no, they instead spotted uh, Border Keeper in the open here. His body's glitching out. I think that was an HEAT round. Usually you see more smoke with HE. Rocket now going out, though. Excuse me, missile from the looks of it. It's the tank, knocks out Shonifer, and the tank is now smoking. The tank is now down. I thought Blue 4 only had a Carl Gustav. There's the Vic going here, crew quickly bailing out, and there goes the tank. What on earth? So who had that? Who had the AT? They just heard the tank explode. T-72 is now no out. longer a viable asset for Op4 here. That's definitely shifted the balance of power in Blue Force favor. No way it was gig um Gigum, but I want to look at the AT that these guys have. We see uh an M72. We have Fact of House down here for Charlie. This looks like where the missile came from. He also has an M72. We have Mad Wolf. Who has the Carl Gustav. So where did that missile come from? Hold up, we got Matoni. Matoni's also has a Carl Gustav. So where? That was not a Carl Gustav round. That was an actual missile. So maybe it was a special, like, from their special weapons crate that they picked up. But I have no idea. 
Who fired that? Because I was under the impression that Blue 4 only had the Carl Gustavs. But clearly I am wrong in that regard. Uh, if I were to guess, I mean, it sounded like it was a Titan. It wasn't a Javelin because it makes a different launcher sound. But the, the missile sound itself seemed to be a direct fire Titan round. But I don't see anyone with a Titan. So I'm very confused here. We're seeing some statics being taken out and now trying to be fielded in for Op 4 here. Maybe they had it in the vehicle. But that was definitely... Oh, here it is. Yep. Okay. So it was, uh, it was a tow launcher. It makes the same exact sound as a Titan. So that was uh, Zicky here. Uh, we don't see the vehicle credit kill because it was a cook-off. But yeah, no, he had a perfect angle. Regroup. If you see where that fireball is, um, looks like he pulled it in a bit more. The tank did pull off to the left, but he perfectly saw it because it was a little more to the right. Um, it was on this hill. So yeah, no, he just saw the uh, tank and was able to take it out with that, um, with that tow launcher. So really good play right there. We also notice it's starting to get a little brighter here. But with that tank being gone, that's going to give Blue 4 a lot more room to come in. And now, honestly, Blue 4 is going to have the advantage. They have a tow launcher, they have a mortar, and they have a grenade machine gun. And that thing definitely has the range to hit this hillside. So Op 4 is in a little bit of trouble. We're also seeing a smoking wreck up here. This is a truck that the, um, the tow might have also hit. You can see that it's open in the back angle here. The 113 is uh, dismounted up here. And we also just heard a gunshot go off. So yeah, no, that tow is doing a really good job of uh, knocking things out. But the one issue I'm having with this is Blue 4. They are taking their time, but... They need to start getting a move on soon. They still have about 45 minutes to get their maneuvering done, but they're taking this very, very cautiously. Actually, no, I'm going to I'm going to take that back because the plan all along that Blue 4 has been doing is trying to slowly divide and conquer Op 4. We saw that with the four Delta guys. There's the GMG now firing. Hitting just the front of this trench line, he, uh, excuse me, not trench line, that, um, ridge line. And they're trying to range it up a little more, uh, but I, it looks like they're having a spotter. Yep, so it's, uh, Matoni coordinating with Sixor here. And you can watch these rounds actually come in with the tracer. And gonna be a little over now, but that's definitely gonna shock that infantry group. It's a little easier to see it with, um... We're in a black thermal mode so we can see the lines a bit easier. Because the blue, I mean, it's a little tough to see that. But here's, here's white thermals here. So it's landing a bit far, but they're using this as a shock tactic to try to route the Op 4 infantry. But basically, Blue 4, it's taking their time. They're keeping their forces consolidated. And they're basically just trying to pick off who they can on op for before they send their forces in a main assault. So actually for what that strategy is worth, it's doing a really good job. And we're having some op for, I think he's a glitched out dead guy cause I'm not getting a symbol on him. That might be a bit confusing, but so far it's actually been working. Um, I'm used to, you know, F and F being 50 rounds. So when I saw that time, I thought in my head, they only had like 15 minutes left, but no, they still have like 45 to 50 minutes so you know with this strategy if they just leave the last 30 minutes for the infantry to maneuver you know send a squad over take the base send another squad over take the communication center and prevent or uh either kill off the commander while he's in there or prevent him from getting in that zone blue four will easily be able to shift the tide here and score the victory We still have Op 4. Uh, they also pushed their toe up. 
his skyline in a bit, but with the GMG covering it, uh, and they've got uh, Matoni kind of overwatching with that rangefinder. Actually, no, that's a laser designator. So he'll be able to get, um, you know, it's, it is practically a rangefinder because it can get ranges. Um, he might be able to also mark targets for the toe. Uh, because they have a night vision scope to engage, and they just got a direct hit on a vehicle here on Papa's position. And that was the other 113. They just pulled this out of base and put on Overwatch Vector, so no kills. But now Op4 has completely lost their vehicle cover and are down to infantry and that one machine gun bunker. You're seeing this is either GMG fire. Or, uh, that, that is, yep, that's GMG fire. Great hit landing by one of the Op4 players there. And it's just doing, uh, like, it's, it's basically a mini mortar at that point. It's a small anti-infantry 20 millimeter mortar. <laughs> I believe grenade machine guns are 20 millimeter and the, um, the under slum launchers are 40 millimeter, but... I'm gonna have to fact check that, but we also do have Op4. They have some positions right here as fallback in case Blue4 gets close up to that ridge, but uh, Blue4 doing a really good job utilizing their support assets here to shift the balance of power. And they're, they're being patient, and that's something Op4 has to contend with at this point. So we're seeing he's again lining it upwards to kind of get a basically a line going up to try to uh, engage anyone. But that's a really smart tactic of, you know, spreading the fire out to make sure you get a hit. Ooh, landing dangerously close. But it turns out the max range of that GMG is actually right on top of op Four's position right here. No kills there, but definitely some wounds. We see the Zulu guy bandaging right now. That would be uh, Mikel. And we have Sergeant Fluffer just chilling in the middle of it, knowing that uh, it's going to take a lot more than that to defeat him. <laughs> but yeah, Op4, they've set up a loose 360 perimeter here. They still have their... Hold on. Blue Force SOCOM boat might have just found Op Force VIP in the RHIV, and Flanker is immediately getting out and getting on the GMG to try to engage the VIP. Honestly, I would rather have the 134. Uh, what he needs to do is get back in this boat and then get closer to him, stop the boat and then get on the 134 and he could just light that boat up on like just completely annihilate it but now we have op 4 vip under pressure here from a naval asset we'll keep an eye on that but if op 4 loses the vip early on uh op 4 has to go for a supremacy victory meaning they would have to be offensive against blue 4 and try to push them down to five people and i'm not sure they're gonna have the possibility there we see uh trace around going out possibly on this glitched out guy right here so he's kind of a scarecrow at that point uh they might be going a little higher but uh that's kind of out of their engagement range definitely hear some shots going we also have a blue four unconscious guy back here not sure what knocked out, out back to the lot uh back to the house here But yeah, now we're having some GMG fire going up to that dude. He's an AI, because he just went prone. Definitely just a random uh, AI guy. That's going to take a lot of the fire of the GMG. Because Blue Force now a bit confused, thinking there's more guys up here. Real quick. Blanker's pulling the boat up. VIP now ditching the boat. Nope, getting back in the driver's seat. Oh, poor Bennis. Now, if Bennis is smart and he keeps that RHIB to the front of the SOCOM boat. Yeah, dude, grab the 50 cal. Trust me, that's going to be a lot more effective at this range. Oh, no, Flanker got the kill. Okay, so there goes the boat. 
Bennis now going for the water. I mean, oh, no, nope, there goes Bennis. All right. Op 4 VIP is dead. Blue 4 now has to go for, excuse me, Op 4 now has to go for a supremacy victory. Um, basically what that means is they have to get Blue 4 down to five players or less to get some points. And they also have to maintain control of this base position here. So Blue 4, um, honestly, they just had to kill that guy. And if they can keep the numbers advantage going, they'll be fine. But, I mean, looking at the Op 4 numbers here, uh, we see some of the dead guys that have left. But, I mean, this is an entire sheet of Blue 4 guys compared to, you know, a partial sheet of Op 4. There's still at least like five or six additional guys on the attacking team. And Blue 4 has been doing a really good job with their assets. So all Blue 4 needs to do at this point is just go to that base and turtle it. And they'll win if it goes to time. So, we have 40 minutes left on the clock. Blue 4 server is, is uh, excuse me, TSV server is ready to go. We're seeing some mortar rounds now being trailed up into this compound. Starting to get um, very bright, so we might switch from NVGs here soon. Uh, looks like it was effective. We're seeing some bandages going down. And we got another GMG barrage going. However, the max range is kind of cutting off right here. And Op4 have reset their defensive line in these bushes, relying on the fact that that GL is engaged at a different angle. Toe round fired again! Hitting that building. I think they might have seen someone up here and were trying to get a snipe, because a toe to the face would definitely kill a guy. Papa looks to be crippled. He might have jumped off from the rooftop seeing that rocket come in, which was a very smart call. But for now, we're still we're still going strong here. I mean, Op4, they... I don't know if they're going to realize that their VIP was killed off. If they um, try hailing him and see that they aren't able to reach him on uh, radio, they might switch tactics here. Because if they just play a defensive fight, Blue4 is going to win on proxy because they've stopped the VIP from getting up to the compound. Hence why I don't think keeping the VIP out there was a good idea. They should have just stashed them somewhere close by, but on the mainland. Uh, if they knew that Blue 4 had those boats, because if the VIP were to run into them, it's pretty much a death sentence. It's a Mark 14, so I think chat's saying the Mark 14 is a 40 millimeter. Which makes sense looking at the size of those rounds, so... I mean, either way, it's it's still a freaking grenade machine gun. It <laughs> Thing's nasty. Take another sip of water here, but Blue 4, I mean, we've seen them slowly start repositioning dudes down here. Issue with this position... Sorry, uh... I probably start getting out of uh, night vision here now because it's just getting too bright. The issue with this spot is it is still very, very open. We just heard some sort of explosion. Not sure if that was a mortar or the GL fi uh, GMG firing again. Sounded like it was the toe actually because we just saw another explosion on. Send in goat team six now. Communication station. But I'm not seeing any new kills. Still have Ram that's dead, New Bass and Garrett that are down back there. And the VIP is also dead. Falcon though, he has gotten on this mortar. Um he is now also firing some shots. Let's see if he fires another so I can actually watch where it goes. But we can guess, based off of this angle, it's going to land right on top of the hill. We're actually seeing some explosions happen. Uh, no, it's smoke mortars. So they're now smoking Blue Force position. That's going to make them route. And we'll see if there's another round that comes in that's HE related. <coughs> Excuse me. Choking on my own water now. Ah, oh, for the love of God. One second. 
God damn it. Ah, oh, I just fucked my voice. Because I tried to drink some fucking water. Okay. Why can't I speak? I can't. Why can't I speak normally? God damn it. Okay. Yep, so uh, that mortar didn't have any HE. He fired some uh, <clears throat> some smoke and some flares to try to route the blue four group uh, from this hill. But if they're smart and they realize that that was just smoke and uh, a flare round going in, there's another flare that just came in. Uh, they're going to realize that this is just a ploy to try to get him off that hill so they can just get back on this hill and uh, keep engaged. But that was a good reaction by Blue Force seeing the mortar smoke and immediately pulling away thinking they were about to get hit. Uh, but, I mean, it's, again, a ploy and we see uh, Zicky, he's immediately coming right up back to uh, the static here. And instead, he's actually looking around. He's got a magnified optic here and there he goes. He goes back in the tow. Ooh, sorry about that, guys. I've never had that happen on a stream where I choke so hard on water that I uh, literally my voice went out for a bit blocked by windpipe Whew. but anyway uh, Adrian thanks so much for the five month resub Adrian the emu I hope you keep enjoying the operations and I hope you get a nice kick out of this one 35 minutes remaining on this round it's difficult to say What's going to happen? So Blue 4, if they properly communicate that they killed the VIP, they don't need to go up to the communication center anymore. All they need to do is pull right and push into that base and secure it, turtle it, and then they're done. But we also have a motorcycle driving around on the airstrip. I think they're trying to bait Op 4 to engage them to try to bait Op 4's position to be blown so then the GMG and the mortar can then hit that position. So... Uh, Op 4 is waiting for the opportune time to catch Blue 4 out of position on the coastline here, but this doesn't need to happen because all Blue 4 needs to do to win is just take that base and hold it for the rest of the round. So, I don't think Blue 4's truly realize the extent of what they've done uh, in killing the VIP. They probably didn't properly PID him. Uh, because the, um, Blanker just didn't get a good shot, or they did, and Blue 4 just hasn't adapted their tactics yet, or they're just going for a supremacy victory as well, and just eliminating all of Op 4 that they can. Meanwhile, I don't think Op 4 has gotten the memo either, because if they knew that their VIP was dead, I don't see why they'd pull 360 on this. Uh, I would just go to the defensive objective. So either... Either side doesn't really understand what's gone on in the mission so far, or both sides just understand that they have a plan and they're sticking with it. And they're just gonna keep it going because they don't really know what else to do at that point. Meanwhile, we've still seen Blue Four. Uh, taking the civilian Vix and driving them back and forth, I guess possibly thinking that an Op4 team might go around and flank. Op4 did have an opportunity with the RHIB to uh, send units around, but instead they used it to extract the VIP. Meanwhile, we're having some more rounds fire off. I'm willing to bet. Yeah, they're firing at this AI guy right here. So you see the tracers coming in. We see more GMG coming in. A little short on the right. But uh, this bug here is actually going to give Op4 a bit of an advantage in the sense that, uh, you know, Blue4 is going to think that that's where Op4's force is. Also good to note, the Romeo team, which was on defense of the FOB, is going to get counter aggressive, uh, counter, uh, going to get aggressive here and counter attack Blue4's team, but they might run right into that Blue4 group. And Blue 4 does have the height, uh, high ground right there, so. Little Star Wars joke. Otherwise, we see elements of Echo trying to engage this one guy. But the rounds are, uh, going over. We also did see a SOCOM boat pull around over here. It still only has an additional guy, but I think it's doing some scouting for the um, Op 4 forces here. And Blue 4, they're pushing their groups up. 
And I don't think Op 4's noticed. They've been too busy focusing on the Echo Weapon team. And that's gonna let Alpha and Bravo get right up to this uh, Op 4 position, uh, Oscar and Always, or... Yeah, no, it's Oscar. Take that out. Oh, gosh, that... Is he dead yet? No, he's not. <laughs> Does he even bleed? I don't see any blood on the ground either. So yeah, that AI doing a really good job of just baiting everyone. And what the hell does that sign say? I've been seeing it uh, all the entire round, but it's once and then I don't know what the rest of that is. I think it's kind of funny that Blue 4, they are focusing on this ghost. He hasn't moved at all. They have to suspect something if he's just been sitting there the entire time, you know? Otherwise, Op 4 pushing up this three-man group. They're going to try to take out that weapon team. Unfortunately, they have Delta. Uh, when I say Blue... Uh, that uh, they, uh, they, I mean Blue 4, has their Delta squad watching the right flank. And unfortunately, Op 4 might just walk right on top of them. But these guys seem to be more focused on watching that position themselves and not right in front of them. This might give Op for an opportunity to get right on top of them. Now, whether or not those three guys break through this entire squad size element to then uh, get a shot on the overwatching Echo team is anyone's guess. It's unlikely, but... If they were to get a lot of kills here, that could easily shift the tide of battle here. Because again, Op4 needs the supremacy points to knock out five, um, everyone up to five Blue 4 guys uh, to get two points to, you know, combine that with the total of holding that point at the end um, to still be able to take victory despite the VIP dying. All right, what do we have going on over here? Op4 set up defensive lines back here. I'm not sure if they saw that uh, Blue4 was coming up on that position, but they're pulling back at angles to still overwatch this area uh, out of the line of sight of the weapons team overwatching. That's really smart, because if they were up here, even if they saw Blue4 going up and started engaging, then the GMG and the Mortar would have been able to engage that position. So... Good use of pulling back on their sight lines to try to uh, set up a secondary defensive line so they wouldn't get hit by enemy assets. Oh yeah, okay, you got you guys got to the part of me choking on water, yep. Lovely comments, yep. <laughs> but anyway, Steel trying to engage with the 556 rifle on profit, unfortunately going down. Because you hear that this team has, uh, you know, the G3, the 762 rifle, and then this guy with the 240 Bravo, which is also 762. They were easily able to take steel out there. Falcon took a few hits there. I'm hearing Biscuit fire off with, um, nope, that's the 556 rifle as well. I'm surprised none of them took the Delta team's marksman rifle. Uh, that would have been really smart. Instead, they stuck with their guns. Well, I mean, the suppressed. Weapon, or actually it wasn't suppressed, just had a flash hider, but I mean, free headshots on uh, some of Blue Force guys, that would have been excellent to take. Otherwise, no Blue Force deaths on Delta. And no, no new deaths, period, but they lost steel right there. Meanwhile, Bravo is mounting up to begin an offensive on Op4 Oscar team as Alpha still swings around, and Oscar might be attempting to do a reposition here. We have some GLs firing. And yeah, the AI, it's now bleeding, but he's still standing there acting like an AI to fuck with Blue 4. You gotta love all the crazy rare glitches in Arma 3. Every glitch is a different glitch, but again, because of how calm it is to see one of these rare glitches every week or every other week, it makes all of them common by proxy. So you just expect it at this point. And I just find that really funny. So Biscuit, uh, that is a morphine or an epi stick going in them. You can tell because you hear the little click of the, uh, you know, it being injected. 
So Op4, they've repositioned some guys into this tree line. I don't know if they knew that Blue 4 was coming around this angle, or they're just making a blind prediction here. They're trying to set up a defense line in case a group comes up this forested route, which Blue 4 is attempting to do on the far left. Uh, because Op4, they've uh, left some guys up there for security, but Alpha is a small squad in and of itself. It's gonna be uh, about a 6v5. It's pretty even. Now you're hearing that GMG landing a little off from the main force. It's landing over here now because I think they're uh, misinterpreting how uh, where Op Force position is here. The AI is not immortal because we just saw him bleeding. But then again, you guys are five minutes behind, and I was already covering the AI. These guys trying to find an angle on Biscuit. That are just watching that direction for security sake. And we have 25 minutes remaining. You're right, The um, some of you are talking about the boats. Again, five minutes behind, but the boats, it looks like they've actually... Uh, set up over here but the boat we saw that the gmg was active it could literally pull up on the coast and fire um it, it could be gmg support for alpha coming up if it were to stay you know back because it definitely has the range to hit up here so a little bit of misuse of assets there by blue four in that regard with the socom boat but i mean they've had incredible asset use uh with statics which you rarely see people do in this game and it's really worked out for him. But now you have an arm up here. He might catch the blue four guys out of position as they're advancing. Ooh, they're gonna get caught out in the open right here. But will Anam see him? He's coming around. Doesn't notice them on the right. Oh, now he's. Bravo's come up. They're engaging that group. Anam now running back. Not gonna catch these blue four guys out of position. But blue four turned around to see those gunshots. They probably just saw Anam there. And they quickly go down, but Anam lost an opportunity. Now he's looking. Oh, he totally just saw those guys, and now he's pulling around. Takes multiple shots to the chest. Now panic firing back there. Look at all the tracers coming in on him. Here, I just want to see. Look at this with the... Uh, oh, 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 oh. Now with the thermals, and he is dead. His symbol's gone away. Bravo's pulled around. We have... Two guys down on Bravo's side here. They're down to three dudes out of their five-man team that was coming up here. Uh, but Op4 also lost an additional guy. And you also have the machine gunner firing at range here. Uh, they have lost Cobra as well. But uh, they also have guys back here in reserve uh, to watch for another Blue 4 force coming around. The blue four here is trying to smoke uh, a retreat uh, to try to pull around to the comm site. Uh, that works against the plan that blue four was doing because blue four is trying to divide and conquer here. But blue four in doing that has now divided themselves for op four to now attack and make this fight more even. This is going to force Blue 4 to pull their units off of Overwatch and push them in. By the way, it looks like that Op 4 three-man team is now completely dead. Um, so Falcon, Biscuit, and Steel are all dead right there. Blue 4 was able to easily sweep that group out. And it looks like uh, Echo and Delta did not take a single KIA. So three free kills again. Good for that Divide and Conquer strategy. But now Blue 4 is getting a bit divided here. It looks like Alpha's gonna be able to pull out, though. They do have some guys now firing at them from the high ground. Trying to look for Alpha's uh, roster right here. They're down to four guys. Uh, but we also have Alpha too, so it's, um, it should be around eight guys up here total, but until we have uh, six. I remember them uh, starting with six, but they're gonna get pinned down very easily here. They're gonna have to keep snaking around get to some treacherous terrain here but op4 will be able to kind of keep that high ground and keep them pinned meanwhile blue four now contending the reserve forces have pulled uh down and now they're catching additional blue four guys out in the open so shadow trying to roll away gets hit 
Going in on conscious animation. Not sure if Sirius will uh, go for a double tap. This is not what Blue 4 wanted to do, because if they throw their uh, assaulting teams here... It's less manpower, but at the same time, Blue 4 doesn't need that com uh, communication sensor because they've already killed the VIP. I just don't think they know about it yet because otherwise throwing people up there is a waste of manpower. Um, if they just, you know, send this one Vig, is this a bus? It's a fucking battle bus. I love it. If they just send units up here, if they once they step in, they'll automatically get the territory. They just have to hold that position. This is the text I was seeing. Okay, so there's two different places where there's text. Interesting. But, besides the point, uh, all Blue Force to do is hold that position. They already killed the VIP. Uh, they win. So throwing men at this point into the communication center is a bit of a waste, but I guess it just keeps Op4 on their toes to not move into that spot. So I'm not sure if uh, Urzigal there meant to uh, fire a GL that was... Um, you know, smoke, uh, flare round there. It's like, I think you just fired a second one. Yep, there it is. Um, Pepe here poked his head up and, uh, got it taken off. He can still live, though. And you have this alpha group kind of pinned down right here. But we have, uh, about 19 minutes remaining. I'm hoping something happens in that time because I'm out of here in 19 minutes for my next gig. Hard to say. I think Alpha has turned around some of their units here and are trying to engage. I just heard a marksman round go off. That would be... Nope, it's just um, the sound of the rifle. Interesting. Uh, trying to engage Always here, who's uh, pushing down. So he's quickly trying to retreat back into the forest to get some cover. But look at what this has done to Op 4's line here. All of their units, I want to say at least 90%, have now turned and are facing this section. They're completely ignoring what could potentially be another Blue 4 advance at a different angle. They have a few guys on rear security here, but for the most part, if Blue 4 is just trying to run a distraction right here, they're doing a good job. And if uh, Blue 4 just trades evenly with Op 4 here... Uh, that can whittle down Op4 to a small enough number where the rest of these forces just go in, take the facility, and hold it, and they're fine. Yeah, again, I I think the boats are just chilling right here. I don't really see why they'd be uh, back here. But, you know, those, those weapons, if they had a boat right here with a GMG and they angled the GMG right here to fire up on that spot, they could easily, you know, start hitting the comm tower and help alleviate Alpha's position. Now, good PvP going right here. Did always just turn around and hit some of his own dudes? We just saw some bullets exchange back and forth right here. We have Sirius and Ricky here. I thought they were hit by Blue 4, but there's no way Blue 4 had an angle to hit these guys. I think Always just got confused and hit two of his own guys thinking this was another Blue 4 team coming up. So two additional guys down, that might buy a break for Blake and uh, yours goal to come up here and gain some more ground than they honestly deserve, um, more than they deserved. Yeah, those boats could really be helpful right now. I don't think we're going to see them get used at all for the rest of this mission, which is a big misplay by Blue Fork. They've advanced to the next rock uh, line here. It's only zero gravity and hood. It's a 2v2. Uh, always, though, he's coming around to try to get a flanking shot. Might have just seen uh, Urzgul pull back. Might catch Blake out of position here. Like, does have a 249. Always is a little in the open right there, but there is a tree in Blake's line of sight that's gonna block Always out. Always now advancing far left. Blake might have just seen him out of position, starts engaging. 
lot of rounds going to always. That 249 is not something always wants to deal with right now. Because Blake doesn't need to reload for a while and can easily keep him pinned. So always trying to pop some smoke grenades to cover himself. Throwing him left. He needs to throw in a little more to the right. But Blake should know, based off of these smokes coming out, that he does have always on the run. So he's going to be a little more liberal in pulling out. No, he does not. He pulls back. But now the smoke's starting to billow out heavily to be spotted. You also have Urzgol here seeing that smoke. No, I don't know who fired that GL. Maybe it was always? No, I heard it fire again, though. You can hear the click of it. I don't know if that's uh, Alpha doing that. No, it's uh, Jonathan here firing some GLs up here. There's uh, some landing wheels. There's some flares going. But yeah, Blue Force still being super slow to advance to the base itself. I don't know. I, I like to cover things fully, but I have to go in 15 minutes. I know they also started five minutes late, so it might run an additional five, but I can't I can't afford that because I have a gig at 5.30, you know? Server's ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to give it a quick restart before we start. It's going to be a quick operation. And I might also take uh, just quickly take the stream down for a few minutes just to take a small, like, five-minute break as well. Or hell, I'll just run three ads. It's fine. Three minutes of ads. I keep forgetting that's a thing. Now we have Always flanking down further to the south. He's going to try to come around again. But if he gets a good angle here on Blake and Urzgal, he could potentially uh, take them both out. I'm willing to bet. Yeah, so Cirrus just left. I think he's dead. Yep, I, I think these guys got friendly fired. I don't think they got picked off by Alpha. Maybe, maybe by Jonathan Flank, but I think these guys are too busy firing at Op4 at this angle up here. And now we're having the SOCOM boat come back around. Let me guess, does it have a gunner? Yes, it has a plus one. And that plus one could get on this uh, Mark 19 and fire up at the comm station and help Alpha in their push. So immediately you're seeing a guy get out. And looks like uh, uh, Susuke, um, can't even pronounce his name. He's gonna try to range, but Op4 with this November team immediately realizing uh, this group right here, we see a single GL being fired, I guess, to range this in. Hippie noticing this group, he's immediately trying to engage. That is a MG42 as well. And he's trying to snipe out the statics, uh, trying to hit Corvo here. This is probably why Blue 4 was reluctant to send uh, this team in, because they knew they could be potentially engaged. But they are completely mispid where Hippie is. They're firing to his left. Those tracer rounds should help uh, Corvo see where that show shots are originating from. We're seeing his aim now turning right. We're also seeing um, Susu. Um, God, Susu. I think I'm going to find my final answer there. He is now adjusting to engage those tracer rounds. Those were reload tracers for Hippie. Now his position's been sorted out here. Also, quickly looking back, we have Blake unconscious, always has success, uh, successfully come around, took Blake out, and uh, now we have Urzagol bandaging. Uh, he, I think, is going to go down as well. Alpha's also down a man. There's only five of them there. Uh, and Op4 is now surrounding uh, Urzagol and the other guys is positioned Blake. And still no advancing from that hill. So... Blue Force is just showing that they're being way too defensive now, when in reality they just got to push that military base. Or they know they're waiting for the clock to run down a bit more before they send their forces in. Boat is now being moved. Corvo uh, doing his best to stay on the boat as it moves. Got to be careful he doesn't get armored on it. It's very easy for that to happen, but he's staying with it. And now he's mounted back in it, and now they're going to drive away. So you do see that he was wounded uh, in that uh, shot, but I don't see... Uh, I don't see any banjing, so he either waited to get back in the Vic to do it, or he's pulled uh, out. Um, I think they pulled away because, yep, no, there's Hippie. So Hippie got killed, 
trying to engage the boat. They're just uh, staying in the boat now to bandage Blue 4, that is. Mr. Cool, I think, is going to come up, get that machine gun, and keep firing on the boat. But with how Op 4 is loosely collaborated, the only group that hasn't taken any KIEs is Papa, but they've been engaging with uh, Blue 4's Alpha back here. I don't really see how Op 4 can gain a supremacy victory here. Looks like uh, yours goal was just taken out. And, I mean, Blue 4, I think, is just camping, waiting for the last few minutes. They have the boat right here, so they could literally just have Flanker charge in there in the last two minutes, take the base, and as long as they have one guy in there, they win. So I think Blue 4 doesn't want to just send their guys up, and instead they sent half their force just to kind of test the waters of Op 4. We just heard AT get launched and knocking out Jonathan. Uh, that looked like a standard RPG rocket. I doubt it was OG. But that launch came from Dark Neo. You know what? Actually, I am going to have to stop the stream because I want to get rid of that five minute delay. So it just means you'll only have to wait five minutes if you watch it till the end. Because we'll start right back up at 530. But nine minutes left before I cut it because I have to go run somewhere else. And we're having the boat engage something. It has also mounted its Mark 19 and is now blindly suppressing into this base. I don't know if Blue 4 thinks there's something over there, but we're starting to see Blue 4 mount guys to move in. But they're still being very defensive and slow to go in. But Op 4 still hasn't repositioned any guys. And Blue 4, I mean, they're still down only five dudes. I don't think Jonathan woke back up. Yeah, he died there. It might have actually been an OG round. That or just a direct RPG hit, but more likely an OG. Based on the fact that he bled out that quickly. But Op 4, if they don't send a team down there within the next eight minutes, I'm going to I'm gonna call it early and say it's most likely a Blue 4 victory. Of course, I won't know because I cannot stay for those extra five minutes. But, oh, did you see that? Op 4 was able to knock out the driver <coughs> of the boat. Boat swung around here and is trying to get on the miniguns. I don't know if uh, he was sniped out. I do see this window blown open. See how it's a different color than the others? So I think they knocked that window out and potentially sniped them through it. Now you're seeing the 134 opening up, but it's firing at a friendly, unfortunately. The PHK, he quickly turns around. He, I don't think he has a way of talking to that boat. No, he does. He has an LR, so he should be able to uh, tell the boat to stop. And you're see, hearing that boat engage with the uh, 50 cal just firing blindly into this AO. But I think that just shows that Blue 4... I think Blue 4 thinks that there's an Op 4 force in here. They don't realize that the Op 4 force pulled out to try to engage them. So... With that, I think that's why they're being super defensive because they don't want to... They want to keep their forces on Overwatch and they want to, you know, try to take the communications tower. Because maybe they think that Op 4... Uh, because they lost their VIP would then send their forces to defend that base So they're trying to sweep around again to continue that divide and conquer strategy, but it's not working out for them They've set up another 50 cal. They set up their 240 Bravo here. They're still looking around with their rangefinders, but I, There's just nothing for them to hit Blue 4 in its divide and conquer strategy has divided itself and is being conquered by the remnant of Op 4 and it's if this was a strict PvP only, in terms of, you know, whoever has the most people by the end wins, I think Op4 could potentially bounce back, but just because of what's happened, I don't see, uh, I don't really see Op4 coming back. Down to five minutes. And again, the round will play for an additional five minutes after I leave, so I won't know who the definitive victor is, but I can easily infer, based on what's happened, that I think Blue4 is just going to get in the base, take it, and that's going to be that.
Blue Fort looks like they are grabbing uh, a motorbike. It's back to the logic and one other person. They're going to drive in there to check it out. I like that play. They're using a uh, motorbike that moves very quickly to see if there's anything in the base itself. They're going to find it empty, though. This is uh, up for spawn. They drive right by. Have a few near misses there, and never mind. They dismount. Uh, I don't see any blood, so I'm not sure if they hurt themselves, but they're going to see that this is clear and then probably go up and take the base. You still have Goldman's body up here. I find that adorable. So they're just going to check this for any op for activity, but if it's fine, they're going to move this element in. I think they're also mounting up the uh, Overwatch team in this Vic, and they're going to drive it down as well. They're leaving uh, Lolo up here to uh, do Overwatch, but I think he might also... Uh, I think he's thinking about mounting up in that other Vic and pulling down. So the Op4 Oscar group has reconsolidated. They're up on this rock. Honestly, if uh, if the Overwatch team was still here, they'd have eyes on this position, and it is within striking range of that GMG. I They might be out of ammo, though, for it, though, which is why they're adjusting. That, or they realize that they're running low on time, they need to make an offensive maneuver on that southern base to take it to guarantee their victory. You also have that boat coming around. Let's actually quickly look at it here. I don't see a plus one on it. I think, the yep, the other guy has died then. Let's confirm, uh, looking for a skull. Yep, we also have Corvo dead in it as well. He's got a second copy of himself. That's because he died while uh, the op was starting um, in the warm up, so he was able to relog. But yeah, no, Blue Four is going to make an advance here. We got the Facta Logic and his battle buddy. Uh, and the boat's also pushed up a bit closer. Uh, they're in this building trying to see if uh, anyone's alive in there. Seeing the bodies, though, might freak them out a little bit, but. Now that base is free, and I think Blue Force is going to be able to take it. No, the Overwatch team has decided to gun ho it. So five infantry are going to get out, and they're going to assault this directly from a different flank, relying on the fact that Op4 is trying to set up a defensive line. Uh, so they're going to pincer maneuver the communication center. So Op4, meanwhile, let's do a head count here. We have five guys in that group. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No, 14 guys. I thought there was a third person in that group. So 14. So if Blue4 kills nine more Op4 guys, if these five, six, seven, eight, if these nine Blue4 guys trade evenly with Op4, Blue4 will get the two points for supremacy and their victory is guaranteed at that point. And then we also have another group right here that's just dismounted. I don't see how Op4 is going to push out of this. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to quickly restart my server so I know it's good to go. I might hang for one or two extra minutes, but that is it. I've already gotten on it. I've tested it server side. I know it works. But let's see, Op4 immediately losing one guy going unconscious. There's another unconscious guy being carried around. Uh, Blue4 really close. Uh, Alpha's uh, close to being up there. But the Echo team, they have got a man down. Uh, that was Nomad. So again, trading evenly. That's good. Grenade being thrown. Near perfect, but just short to uh, land by the Papa SL. And now you have Op4 blue on blueing their own guys because they don't know where their own AI are. So you can tell that they're, uh, you know, the perfect lines of communication are gone for Op4 because of the sustained casualties they have taken. Meanwhile, uh, Medic has pushed back on this rock. Overextends a little bit, but Blue4 missing their original barrage. Op4 getting the kill. Oh, they get two Blue4 guys for that one. And we have uh, Massacre coming around. But he is now getting shot by Papa as well. But Papa was getting blue on blue by his own guy. But that 240 wreaking havoc. But this off four guy is going to come down and get a top down kill. Wow. So there goes the support team. 
A lot of free kills for Op4 right there. Uh, Nomad managed to wake back up, but if Op4 continues that level of PvP for the next few minutes, just, they're not going to win because there's more than five guys down at this base and Blue4 now clearing that position out to guarantee that they have it. Uh, but, I mean, great PvP nonetheless. I mean, Op4, if they get the kills here, they can still mount up in a truck, drive down to that base, and then potentially still get a, a victory. Uh, but they have to move fast because time is not on their side. Uh, it's 5.20. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give two minutes. I'm going to give two minutes for the PvP, but then I absolutely have to get out of here. We'll give two more minutes to kind of judge what's still going on here. Player count wise, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 guys still up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So yeah, blue has a 2 to 1 advantage on red right now and blue has a lot of guys coming in. But if, uh, if Op4 is able to keep this up, they will be able to get it on the bounce back. I got 60 more seconds, and then I have to skedaddle. I, uh, we have a TSB operation. Uh, but the next bout of PvP isn't going to start uh, until that Blue 4 group gets into position. But Blue 4 has control of this sector. The only way Op 4 can win is if they mount up all their dudes, beeline it to that position, and wrestle it out of Blue 4's grasp. But it's going to be a bloody fight either way, and then Blue 4 will be able to take the other truck, follow behind, and statistically, Blue 4 is the most likely to win it here. Anyway, guys, I'm going to call it here. We'll be back. Uh, since this is on a five-minute delay, we'll be back in like three minutes if you watch this till the end uh, for the TSB operation. So thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of the day or night. Again, back in a few minutes. Otherwise, cheers. Have a good one. Go operate operationally. And yeah.